If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. So in this module, we're going to continue to look at the IoT controllers API interfaces. We've already looked at how we can use the REST API to gather information from the IoT controller and to get status and change information from devices that are attached to gateways. We're now going to expand that and see how by using the MQTT event interface in conjunction with the REST API, we can now do more advanced functions and capabilities within the IoT controller and within our application and solution uh, that we're developing. So the key thing with M MQTT is that it is a subscribe publish process. So in other words, the sensor is going to generate information. That information is published to a broker and the broker then will send that information on to anybody who wants to subscribe to that same data. So the MQTT broker is running within the IoT controller. It is provided on a dedicated user port of 3883, and it provides updates whenever information changes on any of the sensors or any of the devices that are attached to the IoT controller, that information is published to the broker and the broker will send it to any application that wants that information. So that could be a PC that is running an MQTT client. It could be the rules engine, again, that's running an MQTT client. And whenever that information is updated or sent from the controller to the broker, the broker forwards that information to the individual uh, subscribing entities. So to configure the, the subscribing entity within our rules engine and within our application, we need to know the local broker IP address as well as the broker's port that we'll be publishing the data to. And then also the list of the specific topics that will be published by the controller through the broker and to our rules engine. Now this gives us a lot of advantages with regards to benefits over the API in that we don't do as many API calls. So we're not having to poll the controller to find out each of the individual devices, which has scalability issues as we get to you know, hundreds of devices. We don't need to then send hundreds of requests to the controller. We can just sit back and wait for the state change to be sent from the device through the controller to the application. This also reduces event latency. So rather than having to poll, if you just missed an event, then the next poll is when you'll get that update. So if you have long polling frequencies, then you can easily miss events, or more importantly, you can have quite large latencies. The event published to arrival at the uh, application is much quicker because it's a, a pushed event. This also allows us, with, in conjunction with the MQTT process developed within the controller, allows us to do automatic device capability discovery. So by, as, as you'll see within the example we're going to do, the IoT controller is going to publish all of the information about that sensor to the rules engine so it can build up a local database of all of the capabilities of that sensor and then when an event change is sent we will be able to look up exactly what that sense sensor data is is it a door contact is it temperature is it humidity we're able to get that information from a combination of the status information that is sent as well as the uh, the event notification so in combination of using both the mqtt push and statistics process along and in combined with the standard IoT controller API, we're actually able to get a lot more information uh, combined from the IoT controller. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is log into our IoT controller so that we can set up the, uh, the interface for connection to both MQTT and the Ruckus API. So we log in with our usual credentials that we created when we installed our IoT controller. And you can see that once we log in, that we have uh, currently two devices that have been onboarded and one access point. So if we look at our Ruckus IoT access point, we have an H510 here, which is currently configured in Zigbee mode. And you can see the configuration is in here. And we have two devices that have been configured and set up within the IoT controller. So we have a door sensor and a water sensor, um, which is given as the uh, one from Climax, a door sensor. And you can see it's listed as an IES zone device of type contact switch. 
and we have a water sensor again which is an IAS zoned device of type water sensor and that one's specifically from Samgin or Samsung Technologies. So you can see that we have this information in the IoT controller about who the manufacturer is, the type of device, its zone. This particular device also provides us with a temperature measurement as well so we're able to very quickly get a lot of information from these devices. So to set up the system so that it's able to provide us with data and updates automatically using MQTT. We need to do a couple of things. The first thing we need to do is to set up the, the system to provide us with the MQTT push. So we do that in our admin and plugins section. And what we need to do is to configure a plugin that uses what we call the controller data stream. So the controller data stream is an MQTT connection. So in here, we need to configure the location of the broker. Now, the IoT controller actually has a broker on board that the user is able to use, which we covered originally. So we just need to point it at the local port. So 127.0.0.1 is the local host. So the, the controller data stream plugin is now going to push that to the local broker on the IoT controller. We need to use a specific port and we're going to use specific port 3883 because that is the user port that we are able to, uh, to assign and we need to say where we want to push the data to. So we are going to publish the data for any updates from the IoT controller into a topic called status. And we're going to push that every 10 seconds. So the IoT controller is going to give us an update every 10 seconds of exactly what is going on within the controller. All of the devices, all of the signal information, battery level, that kind of information is all provided to us every 10 seconds. For events, we want to add an additional topic. So device reporting, we're going to push that to events. So anytime there is a change in state from a device, then we're going to forward that to our, uh, we're going to publish that into our MQTT events topic. So once we've configured that, we can now apply that and restart the uh, MQTT broker. So now our plugin is uh, configured. You can see here that currently it's saying it's unable to reach that uh, location, but that'll come up in uh, in a few seconds once it connects to the uh, to the relevant data stream. The next thing we need to do is we need to go to our rules engine. So in our rules engine now, we need to create a flow that is going to also connect to the MQTT broker and it's going to receive that data. Additionally, we also need to configure the application so that it can use the API. So we'll do that in two parts. The first thing we need to do is to configure the API interface, which we've covered in an earlier module. So really what we need to do is to point to the IoT controller's IP address, which in this case is the local host, and we need to set up our authentication to get a token. So we're gonna use our admin and our, our credentials. Once we've uh, initialized those, what will happen is that we will get a, a token from the IoT controller, which will be stored in our local flow. So you can see in here that we have token and the refresh token stored within the uh, flow. The second thing we need to do is we need to configure our input nodes to provide us places for the data for the events and the status to be pushed. So we have our, our input MQTT input nodes here which we've used from our network nodes. So what we need to do is to open this up and we need to create an MQTT broker. So we'll create a new broker and we'll give it a name. So we'll call it local IoT controller. And then the other thing we need to do is we need to give it the name of the host. So again, this is gonna be our local host, so 127.00.1, and we need to assign it to port 3883. The other thing we want to do is to give ourselves plenty of time to connect the session. So what we'll do is we'll increase our keep alive time so that it times out after an hour. So that gives us everything we need to do now to connect our local client software tool into our MQTT broker that's running on the IoT controller. So we hit add on that and we need to also then subscribe to the topics that we're interested in. So we need the events topic and we also need our status topic and again we need to configure that for our local iot controller connection so now we have two nodes that are configured to provide us status information every 10 seconds and events whenever an event changes so what i'll do is i'll deploy that but i'll also switch on the status view so we can see any messages that are coming from the controller into our platform so we'll deploy that flow and we'll wait now for the first 
status message. And there it is. So very quickly, you can see we've received a message from the IoT controller on our status topic, which is an MQTT status topic. And you can see we have a payload in here. So our payload now will give us our information on all of the devices that are connected to the IoT controller. And if you remember, we have two devices. We have a door sensor and a water sensor. So we open our first device because there's an array and we can see the information about that device. Now, there's nothing in here that is user friendly. It's all designed from a programming perspective. So you can see that we have the device EUID. So this is the unique identifier for that device. We can see it's a device type and we can also see all of the clusters and endpoints for that particular device. So there are there's one endpoint, endpoint one, and there are three clusters. So zero, three and 500. And 500 is our IAS zone cluster. And you can see in there we have a number of attributes as well. So we have attribute one, which is the zone type, attribute two, which is the zone status, our zone state, our zone ID, and our CIE address. So if we look at zone status here, and in fact, if we look at zone type, you can see that the zone type is defined as a contact switch. So if you remember when we looked at the device information, the reported value was a contact switch. So we're now able to map contact switch to attribute ID, to cluster ID, endpoint ID, and device EUID. So we have all the information that we need now that if we get a notification from that endpoint cluster, EUID and attribute, that we know that the contact switch has changed state. And we have the same thing for our other device. So our other device is a water sensor. So this is the device EUID, the endpoint ID, and then we have a whole range of different clusters available to us. So rather than just being 500, we also have 502, which is our temperature cluster and we can see we have minimum measurement virus. So the status information we're getting every 10 seconds from the controller continues to update us with all the information about that device and its status and all the cluster and information that's available there. But we can take that information now and we can feed that information into a small routine that will then build additional values and information about that sensor using the API. So when a new device comes in, what we can do is we can ask the IoT controller to give us more information about that device and about all the information that that device contains. So what I'll do is I will go into my context and I will uh, delete the list of devices because at the moment I'm saving them. So when a device now comes, a status update comes in, we'll get a new device notification because I've deleted them and we'll get a, an update. So here we can see now that the, the device has given us an update and we can see that the device has now filled in information. So the flow using the API from that MQTT push is now able to gather more information. So we're able to get information about whether or not it's connected, it's a zone type. We're also able to get line quality information and RSSI information and the device name. So the device name didn't come across as part of an MQTT push, but in conjunction with the API, we're able to find out the name of that device and we're able to build up a small local database now of all of the information about each of those devices. So now we're able to get the device name, the manufacturer. We're able to then also keep information about the cluster information. So I'm able to populate the table of each of the clusters, know that it's an IAS zone and each of the values I'm able to get the zone status. So we're able to build up a local repository within our rules engine and within our application based just on what the controller is telling us in conjunction with the API. Now, in addition to that, we can also now use that information for when an event is triggered. So now if I use the incoming event alarm, so if I open a door sensor, so I've switched on the debug message, if I open the door sensor now, and you, what you'll do is you'll see an event come in from the IoT controller, and you can actually now see the first event that's come in. So the first event that came in gives us the information about the device. So it tells us which gateway sent the message. It tells us the EUID of the sensor, the cluster ID, the endpoint ID, and the attribute ID. So I can see here that the attribute ID was two. Now that doesn't mean anything to me, but I can now parse that using our lookup table for our device. And I can see that parse of zero two is the zone status. 
and I can now determine based on that that the, the, the device has changed state. So I can now look at the next entry. So let's look at what comes out after I've parsed that information. So again, I will clear the database. I will open the door contact. And now we can see what came in. So we're now able to, to determine the device name because we have its EUID. We're able to determine it's a contact switch and that it has a specific value because the state has changed. So we're able to use this information in conjunction with the status and the event to now do more in, to gather more statistics and more data about what has actually changed. So I know that the contact switch has changed state. Now I can take that one step further and feed that message because I know it's a contact switch. I can feed that message out and parse the data differently. So now I can look at the state of bit zero or bit two or bit four and then determine each of the alarms that have been sent on and off. So again, what I'll do is I'll switch on the message and I will open the door sensor. And again, so now you can see here the information and we've really started to parse down the, the message and give it into a much more flow and user friendly format. So now I know door one, which is an IAS zone device, a contact switch has true. So in other words, somebody's opened the door. And if I close the door, you'll see we get another state change. So now the door is saying false, so it's closed. So we're very quickly able to just with a few functions and a combination of the MQTT push and the API, we're able to get a lot more useful information about exactly what's going on with a device and what type of device it is without me having to tell the application or the program, this is a door sensor. These are the clusters, the endpoints and the attribute IDs that you need to know. Without programming anything within our rules engine, I'm able to now detect if a water sensor goes off. So if I trigger a water sensor, the water alarm comes in. I know it's a water sensor. It tells me it's a water sensor. And I know that the alarm state is now true because I've, I've detected that bit one in this message is true. And if I clear that and release the water sensor, we immediately get a notification of false that the water sensor is now clear. There is no alarm on that device. So very simply, just by using a combination of the MQTT push and a, the API to query the controller, we're able to build up real information and not have to query the user or have information about the system so that we can build, in, build a status and get a full def, def, defined list of the capabilities of every single one of our devices within our IoT controller environment fully automatically and without having to query or ask questions of the user. So that completes the example of how we can use the combination of the MQTT controller data stream and the API together in a very simple application to, sh to streamline the operation and determine the data coming from the uh, sensor into the application. Mm -hmm.